Yes, you're welcome back to the show. Oh, let me welcome you officially and formally to the show in the sense that uh, the show is just starting as far as Health Matter Day concerned. Every Saturday night, we they come your way on top Health Matter, which we talked about. And uh, the trending matter, what we still talk about, that is uh, the one that affects the whole world. Call it a global scourge, call it a pandemic, you are still on point. I'm talking about COVID. 19, popularly known as coronavirus. Now, there we stopped last week. We were able uh, to sample a whole lot of issues last week vis a vis the Madagascar, uh, the Madagascar uh, drink uh, or herb drink, herbal drink. We talked about extensively on how to wash our hands. We talked about extensively on how to use the face mask. We talked about symptoms of COVID 19 last week. So, this week, permit me. As I welcome on board our uh, usual doctor. Doctor, you're looking bright. Thank you, Chief. I, uh, our, I like I, your face, Max, sir. Thank you. Yours is better. It's good, too. <laughs> thank you. Good morning, viewers at home and around the world. We're happy to be back today. As we said last week, we'll be continuing from where we stopped coronavirus pandemic. And this morning, we're going to look at a number of things that have to do with the use of face masks. The use of face masks in our communities, the use of face masks in hospital settings, the use of face masks during home care. I think about a day or two ago, the Lagos State Commission of Health, talking about Professor Aki Abayomi, updated Lagosians and indeed Nigerians, that come next week, Lagos State will issue a, a protocol on, the, on how home treatment can be done for people who have little or no symptoms that are infected with this scourge. So today we are still talking about coronavirus pandemic. Coronavirus pandemic, as we all know, was a pandemic that started early last year and of course as we speak it has affected or is still affecting about 213 countries and territories of the world and two conveyances talking about those uh, uh, cruise ship that initially uh, a number of people who were in it got infected as of this moment on a global scale COVID-19, which is the official name of coronavirus, has actually affected about 5.3 million people globally. It has affected 5,306,928 individuals, and it has caused about 340,000 deaths. Specifically, 340,072 people have unfortunately lost their lives to this pandemic. Thankfully enough, too, a good number of people have recovered. 2,160,530 persons have actually recovered from this scourge. Looking at uh, the affectation in African sub-region, at the moment, South Africa has about 20,000 125 affected individuals. And of course, next to South Africa is Egypt. 16,786 persons have been affected in Egypt. And after Egypt comes Algeria with 7,918 persons. And of course, we have Morocco with 7,332 cases. And our beloved country, Nigeria, at the moment, we also have 7,261. And the number of new cases that we saw over the night was 245. And of course, the number of people that died so far in Nigeria, unfortunately to this contagion, as of today, stands as 200 and 221. New deaths in Nigeria recorded in the, uh, in the uh, uh, reported was 10 individuals. The figures are not looking anything good, I must be honest with you. Now, let's narrow it down 
for that to our own environment. Okay. I said at the beginning that Lagos State government is making plans to make provision for home treatment. Why was that necessary? I will tell you why it became necessary. Now, the number of active cases in Lagos have shot up in such a way that it has exceeded the capacity of isolation bed spaces, coupled with a number of other factors, ranging from people, infected individuals who are running away from treatment. Government has come out to say that it is regrettable that infected individuals will be offered to be treated and they will run away. And a number of people have adduced reasons that could be making these people to shy away from treatment. But of course, we have said countless number of times that majority of the infected, specifically 80 to 85 uh, percent of people that are infected with this contagion, may not have any significant signs and symptoms. So it is possible for an infected person not to even believe that he or she has been infected by COVID-19. Why? Because such a person is not presenting any form of symptom. He's not feeling sick. He's not having headache. He's not having fever. And you're telling him that he has been infected. Of course, chances, chances are that such a person will have his or her doubts. And these are some of the things that have helped to fuel the community spread that we now have in Nigeria today because of unbelief. And that is why we are here today to talk about things that we need to do. As we speak at the moment, the number of active cases in Lagos has gone beyond 1,500. Okay? We're going to see some figures shortly. They're going to show us some, a number of active cases in Lagos. So it has by far surpassed the available isolation bed capacity. Okay? So the government has no option than to consider other options so as to win the battle. Essentially, when you're talking about containment, in public health, you must look at, number one, testing. Very important. If you do not test more, you're not likely to discover all the people or most of the people that, is, that are infected in any particular community. After testing, the next one is trace. You also need to do what is referred to as contact Trading. tracing. You need to have an idea. The number of people that have come in contact with someone who has tested positive to COVID-19. And after you must have done that, you also need to do what? Isolate. You need to promptly isolate those infected individuals. When, you've, when, you, when you're able to do so, you'll be able to mitigate further spread. You'll be able to interrupt further community spread of this contagion. And of course, after isolation comes treatment. It is a practice all over the world that mildly infected individuals usually will be managed at home. But I also must point out that the peculiarities and circumstances and realities in some of these nations of the world are not the same with what is obtainable in African sub-region. And we know why. A good number of us do know that some of the accommodation types that a, no, a good number or large percentage of people in our cities live in are not such that can support safe isolation at home. And also, you have to also factor in the challenges that will come with unbelief, the challenges that will come with non-compliance of government, of the, of the uh, uh, directives that government have issued. And today, we'll be looking at one of such directives. However, not in isolation talking about the use of face masks in this uh, battle for COVID-19. Now, I want to point out that I'll be relying heavily on WHO's recommendation along this line. Not just WHO's recommendation, other recognized health institutions like CDC, and of course, what our government is saying. Very important. Let's talk about transmissibility of this contagion. We have Majorly, two routes or two routes of transmission for COVID-19. Number one is through respiratory droplets. Okay? When somebody who is infected, an infected individual coughs and sneezes and talks around you, 
in close proximity. Okay, what happens is that the person releases infected uh, droplets that can be aerosolized in such a way that some of them may hang in the air for a, for a few minutes. Meaning that anybody who probably stays in such an environment at that material time, who probably may not be using face masks, can easily, easily, very easily get uh, infected by breathing in this droplets. That's number one. The second route of transmission is through contact. When an infected person sneezes or coughs, especially when such a person is not making use of mask of any type, what happens is that those droplets that are released, respiratory droplets that are released, will fall on hard surfaces in and around such a person. It could be in an office. It could be an asymptomatic individual. It could be a pre-symptomatic individual who may not be showing any, any, any form of sign at that moment, but yet the person is highly contagious. So what happens is that when an uninfected individual touches such hard surface and then end up touching his eyes or his mouth, he can get infected by just touching an infected hard surface and then contaminating his or her eyes. So those are the two major routes of transmission that we need to guide against. Number one, when we talk about the use of face masks, usually we, di we differentiate from, we need to differentiate, when, we, when we're talking about face masks here, we need to differentiate from medical grade face masks and non-medical face masks. Of course, the general public has been advised to wear the non-medical face masks, similar to what Chief and I are using today, okay? What are the medical face masks? The medical face masks, we are advised not to use them. Now, why are we advised not to use them? Number one is that it could give a false sense of security to people who are using it. You feel that now that I'm using this, I'm super protected. And as a result, such a person may lose sight of the other preventive IPC, infection prevention and control uh, measures or protocols, which include uh, respiratory hygiene, regular hand washing, and social distancing, among others. Another reason why we advise not to use, make use of our medical grade face masks is the fact that it will deprive our frontline medical workers who may be using it, who may be needing it at such a critical time to save the sick as well as prevent oneself. So, of course, we have to make it clear that usually people need to understand why they need to use face masks, and that is what we are dealing with today. Number one is the person who has, who has been infected could be a source of, such, of, 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 uh, of uh, releasing such infected droplets. So such a person, when such a person uses face masks, the person not only prevents himself or herself from infecting people, from releasing it into the space in and around the person, especially when the person is in an enclosed environment, in an air-conditioned environment. Okay? Okay, Dr. Ba, thank you very much. We'll definitely have more of that. When we return from this break, so go nowhere, question time. In which we're going to take enter from the break. We'll be right back. Thank you. Health matter na serious matter. Oh. That's now why we they always get Dr. Bat Ufe Gunam every Saturday to come teach us and enlighten us on top with health matter. You fit also advertise your product and services on top with show where they help let people. Terms and conditions apply. Shao. Wet your hands with water. Apply soap. Rub your hands palm to palm and wash the backs of both hands and in between your fingers. Then palm to palm with fingers interlocked. Clasp your hands together and rub. And then clean around the thumbs too. Rub your fingertips in the palms of your hands and finish off with the wrists. Rinse your hands really well with water and dry them thoroughly with a paper towel. Use the towel to turn off the tap. Your hands are now clean.
Moving on, N95, 3N1860. Perform hand hygiene before putting on mask. Choose the correct size of the mask and ensure there are no defects. Hold the N95 in your palm with the nose piece at fingertips. Hang head straps freely below hand. Position the N95 under your chin with the nose piece up. While holding the N95 in place, pull the top strap over your head so it rests high on the back of your head. Pull the bottom strap over your head and position it around your neck, below your ears. If you have long hair, the strap must be positioned beneath your hair. Untwist the straps. Position the N95 low on your nose. Using both hands, mold the nose piece to the shape of your nose by pushing downward and outward, while moving your fingertips down both sides of the nose piece. Perform a fit check by placing both hands completely over the mask. Be careful not to disturb the position and exhale sharply. If air leaks around your nose, adjust the nose piece as described in step 5. If air leaks at the mask edges, adjust the straps back along the sides of your head. Perform fit check again if an adjustment is made. Wear the right size mask. Fit check is mandatory for all users of N95 mask and must be performed every time upon wearing. Perform hand hygiene after putting on mask. Pull bottom strap overhead. Maintain the hold on the first strap. Use another hand to pull the top strap overhead. Do not touch front surface of mask. It should be kept in a new clean Ziploc bag for reuse and discarded at end of day unless wet or soiled. Perform hand hygiene after removal of mask and after putting on the reused mask. Welcome back. Uh, I did enjoy everything with that uh, Singapore uh, General Hospital being give us onto the use of a face mask. Dr. Bart, I would like to open the phone line. So there are some questions here, most definitely, that me I would like to start with. But like the lady rightly tells us, check your face mask to make sure it fits. Very important. <laughs> Very okay, important. okay, okay. Let's start like this. Um, Sir, uh, please, anybody who want to call us, feel free to call in. I'm going to reduce the volume on your TV set so that we'll go enjoy the communication together. The issue of face mask, now I'll go take start. Over the week, we heard the story of somebody where they, they jog with face mask and they can collapse. Uh, is there any health-related disease or are there health-related diseases that can warrant one not to wear the face mask at all, e.g., pneumonia, etc. Are they health related issues? So, that uh, another reason I ask this question is because I've, I, I came across police uh, doing stop and check uh, yesterday, I think the day before yesterday, yes, and I had to start stop while coming to work and ask them, What did these people do? They say they know wear face mask. And one of the excuses where one person where they be apprehended being give, they say, Now, for medical reasons, you know, where I'm. You know, if you breathe well, now for medical reasons, you know, where I'm. So, what do you think, sir? Thank you very much for that uh, very important questions. Okay, but before You're I answer those questions, I want to just point out that there are things that we expect a good face mask should have be it the medical grade face mask or the clothed face mask, just like the one I'm putting on now. I will talk about the qu qualities, okay, before I answer his question. Now, there are some things we expect that a good face mask should do, be it clothed face mask or medical grade face mask. Number one is, is easy breathability. The ability of such an individual to be able to breathe in and out 
without much difficulties. Easy or adequate breathability is very important. Number two is that it must have a high filtration uh, capacity. And then number three is that it must be able to have fluid penetration, good fluid penetration resistance in such a way that if you're performing a procedure, in an, uh, uh, an invasive procedure in a medical setting, and then blood or fluid splashes, the mask should be able to repel it in such a way that it won't penetrate through the pores of the mask. And that brings us to talking about the qualities. We are still going to talk about the use of face masks in the home care setting. Now that we are beginning to talk about managing Having people who are infected being managed at home is important. We know how to go about it because you have to use different set of masks if you have to do that or get involved. Talking about the relations that might be around such a person. We are not saying we are even going to... He has started already because all of these figures that we are seeing, if they are not in an isolation center, they probably should be in their houses. It's as simple as that. So people need to be tutored on what, on how to go about it. Number one is that when you're using a face mask, a good face mask, you need to consider the number of layers, the type of fabric that such face mask is made up of. Well, what we have in Nigeria is that everybody has become a face mask producer. A lot of people, they cut all sorts of materials, and of course, they use it to make face masks. And people who end up buying them find it very difficult to breathe. And as a result, you, you see that a lot of people they will have it on their face, apparently to run away from the law enforcement agents who may ask them, is it that they have it below their chin or they have it at their forehead? Their nose, noses are exposed, their mouths equally are exposed. This set of people is as good as you're not putting on a face mask, especially when you're in a closed area like supermarket, shopping mall, that you come in contact with other people that it may not be possible for you to observe social and physical distancing. Number two, I've talked about that a little while ago. Breathability of the material used for such a mask is important. Number three is water repellent. Water repellent or hydrophobic qualities. It should be in such a way that if fluid touches it, it should just slide down without penetrating the substance of the mask. Number two is the shape of the mask is very important. The shape will actually determine if such a mask can conveniently cover one's nose and one's mouth. Those are places that are expected to be covered. Number five is the fit of mask. It needs to give you a fit in such a way that it will be snugly fitted to your face. That's why we showed those two videos on how to wear medical gray face mask. The N95 is a different ball game. Medical, uh, frontline medical workers and other medical workers know how, how, how to handle that. But it has, it, it's coming to a stage where people should be tutored on how to wear medical grade masks, keeping in mind that home care will soon start officially in Lagos State. Now, if you have an infected person that you are aware of, that is staying, still staying within your flat or within your compound and is unable for one reason or the other to go into isolation, such a person should not be used should, should not be using clothed face masks as Chief and I are doing. Such a person should go for medical, surgical face masks at least. Now, there are some things, a number of things that are expected from such an individual. I will stop that so that I can deal decisively with his question. Talking about the person that was jogging, I was putting on a face mask and slumped. I don't know, and I can't confirm such a story. But I can also not say from a medical standpoint that could be possible. Now, what happens is that some of these face masks that we, that we use, especially the tight-fitted ones, the medical-grade ones, that is part of the reason why the members of the public, general public, are advised not to use them because the medical workers who use them understand and know a thing or two about such masks. The tight fitness can actually cause, give, you, give rise to a condition where you have some significant, uh, uh, some degree of accumulation of carbon dioxide that such a person is exhaling, is breathing out within the enclosure of the mask. So if you wear it for a long, long time without probably taking it out to let out such air, you could have challenges, could have okay. just, just challenges. We have Sorry, Jude from Rivers. Good morning, Jude. I'm hearing you, sir. How are you doing, sir? I'm fine. The doctor is not talking to me now. Okay, Jude. The doctor is talking okay. to you now, but you have to reduce the volume on your TV set. 
Uh, good morning, sir. Yes, reduce the volume on your TV set, please. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, my brother. Okay. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you. Hello, yeah. Mr. Judah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm hearing you now. Now go ahead with your question, please. I um, want to know, uh, not much question anywhere, that I just want to know this coronavirus uh, pandemic. When are we going to be free from this? I think this thing has cost a lot of, yes. you know, global economic shutdown. So please, I just want to know. That's not my question. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much for that very important question. We all have the same question, my brother. When are we going to be free? When are we going to have our lives back? It's a big question that a lot of people have attempted to answer, but I'm not sure anybody has been able to answer it correctly. And I will tell you my reasons. The only thing, a number of things can actually help to stop and then, uh, or probably put a stop to this global pandemic. One of such will be the discovery of an effective vaccine. We are looking forward that come January 2021, we may have a number of vaccines that people can start using that could be out for general use, going by the degree of uh, uh, advancement that have, uh, that have been made along those lines. For people who are involved in research and development of a vaccine, the last time we talked about, we talked about 89 vaccine candidates that were in two different stages of uh, production. Of but it has gone beyond that. It's over 200. It's about 211. The last update I read from WHO said over 200 vaccine candidates are in the making. And of course, the president of U.S. Have, has equally come out to say that there, there are uh, uh, high hopes that by come January 2021, we'll be able to have some vaccines that people will start using. That can help to stop the spread or mitigate the spread. Another thing too that can happen is if we're able to discover a cure. Also, positive results have happened in a number of areas. A number of drugs that are undergoing trials are giving good results. One of them is Rendasava. Okay. Now, coming back to the questions you asked, are there health concerns that somebody who is putting on mask can develop? Yes, there are health concerns that people who are using mask continuously for a long period of time, but not the type of mask the members of the public are advised to use. Okay. Talking about the medical grade face mask, like N95 respirator face mask, another mask along, along that grade. Okay? Such can pose such a challenge. But the good thing is that the medical workers who themselves are using this mask, mask know what to do. In some centers, they could need a form of oxygen supplementation for such individuals. Okay, so the idea here is that when people use face masks, if you're in your house, if you're inside the car and there is nobody with you, you can let out the mask. It should be used as at when necessary. But if you're going, getting into the public, don't, do, not get me wrong, do not get me wrong with what I've just said now. I'm not saying people should constantly use, I'm not saying people shouldn't use their face masks as directed. But what I'm saying is that if you're, for instance, you're in the inside car alone, the car alone, you, you can up. take it off. Yes. Even if your, your windows are not wound up, you can take it off to have some fresh air. And then when you get into environment that you're coming in contact with individuals, with people, you put, put on your mask again. That will help you to uh, avoid the suffocating effect that such masks can actually uh, uh, produce. Huh. Keeping in mind that a number of masks that we are using here, that the people that made them are our locals. They didn't have any medical knowledge. They didn't make them to any specification. What they want is something that can be easily adjustable, cover one's face, so that the, person will, the person's nose and mouth gets covered. But making of masks should be much more than that. I've read out some, some other things that need to be considered. Anybody putting on such a mask should be able to speak freely, as I'm doing now. I can do that because the mask I'm having has a respirator. But somebody who has a mask without respirator like chief may find it difficult. Even the words won't be coming out fine. We know these things. Let's not shy away from it. So, but what we need to do is we should have, if you're using a cloth mask, make sure you have not just one. Have a number of, of them, up to two or three. I think they're as cheap as uh, 100 naira for one. So that you can actually go home and see which of them can give you a better breathability, a better capacity to be able to breathe in and out. If that happens, you'll be able to wear the mask for the required period of time or usually 
in, in places where you're exposed, where you come in contact with a, a large number of people like a shopping mall, supermarket, and some other place, places. Thank you very much for that question. Okay, another question we'd like to throw to you, sir, is uh, the issue of asymptomatic. For those who don't have symptoms of this uh, virus, sir, would they still come down with the disease or stand the risk of losing their lives? Because you said there are some people who will not have symptoms at all. For those who don't have symptoms, maybe we'll take that after Jane, sir. Jane, good morning. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, mm -hmm. Jane. I say those things. Yeah. Fine, thank you. Uh, I have uh, a question to ask concerning uh, this uh, easing uh, the lockdown. Okay, go ahead. We know that. Oh. So, so those who don't actually come down with these symptoms at all, but they have it, would they still fall sick or do they stand the risk of losing their lives, sir? Thank you very much for that question. But before I take the question, because you made you made uh, you alluded you made a mention of a medical name, asymptomatic. I want to clarify those uh, 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 subheadings, okay, so that for clarity's sake, someone can be asymptomatic, meaning that the person is presenting with no symptoms, and yet the person has been infected. Someone can you you could also have presymptomatic individuals now. To understand presymptomatic, what presymptomatic concept of presymptomatic uh, pre is all about, I need to tell us that, remind us of what we have said before concerning the uh, incubation period of this disease. The, the average incubation period of uh, COVID-19 is between five to six days, but it can actually extend up to 14 days. Now, incubation period is the time of exposure to the virus to the time of manifestation of symptom. That is what incubation period is all about. So if one is exposed to the virus today, in two or three days' time, the person may be contagious. Despite the fact that such a person has not started manifesting, showing any, manifesting any signs and symptoms, the person could test positive at that time and could be contagious even before symptoms will start coming. And what are some of these symptoms? The person could be presenting with dry cough, person could have fever, person could have difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath. Okay, person could have loss of smell, person could have GIT symptoms like uh, vomiting, stooling, and what have you. Okay, so these are some of the things that the person can present with for pre symptomatic, uh, uh, uh that, that have turned out to become symptomatic after all. And that, 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 that's, uh, the third group is the symptomatic uh, people or symptomatic patients. It has been found out that this set of people are actually the ones that are responsible for large percentage of the transmission we have in the community, okay? Now, if you also look at the general picture, we have said that 80 to 85% of people who may be infected may actually not present with any, may present with little or no symptoms or just a mild disease. It is on the, on the basis of this that the idea of home treatment is coming, uh, uh, is being considered now. Because this set of people, I'm sure some of you may have seen some videos of some uh, isolation centers where people appear to infected people, supposedly infected people appear to be having the fun of their lives. Of course. Now that was made possible, not because they were truly not infected. It was made possible because of the fact that people who were being kept there were not presenting with any symptoms. So because they were not presenting with any symptoms, a good number of them may not even be convinced that there was a need for keeping them there after all. Let's take freedom, sir. Freedom, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you Good doing? Good morning, my brother. Oh, it's doing fine, sir. I was just enjoying your program on TV this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask. Hello? Hello, Hello where are we too? Go ahead. Yeah, I want to ask about this uh, COVID-19 stuff. People are just emphasizing on the nose mask, nose mask. What about the hand, the hand, or oh, that we use to touch different things? Because I'm not talking about putting on hand gloves, but initially when I started, they said put on hand gloves, put on hand gloves. Now we use our hand touch all sorts of things. We even the hand gloves. They nobody talk about it. They only concentrate on the nose mask. Why? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. That is the the uh, uh, the idea we want to discourage as much as possible. 
At the beginning, we have actually talked about some other uh, infection prevention and control protocols. We have mentioned the use of hand, uh, hand washing, use of uh, uh, um, social distancing, and some other measures that one needs to put in, in place, one needs to actually integrate. So, but the, that of face masks is important, is key, because it is central to what we are doing. Keeping in mind that we have a lot of infected people who may be living with us in the communities at the moment as a result of inadequate isolation bed spaces or capacity. Okay? Now, if you have that in mind, that you could, the, the, the person sitting seated in a, in a tricycle with you or probably in a bus with you could be an asymptomatic carrier, could be a pre-symptomatic carrier, you discover that in the bus at that arterial time, you don't have water to wash your hand. The best you could do is to have a hand sanitizer that you can use. But that won't prevent you if such a person sneezes and coughs in such an environment, especially when such a person is not putting on any form of face mask. So that is why it is important that we know some of these things. Thank you very much. You are actually uh, demystifying the case of, uh, you said 80 to 85% of people who may be uh, infected may not present with any symptoms. Yes. Now, because this uh, uh, category of people that I talked about may not be pre presenting with any symptoms, it becomes difficult for them to even be you convinced. You say we see them in ICT centers playing and they are fine. Yes. Okay, so people begin to wonder, are these supposed to be the infected people that we talked about, the numbers that we are seeing? Yesterday, I encountered some group of men who were having arguments and, and they were saying all, all sorts of things. I couldn't just pass. I greeted them politely and begged to be part of their conversation. And of course, what they were saying is that government is just looking for means to embezzle money and do this, that none of those people are not, I said, is a lie. Those people are truly infected. What we need is knowledge. We need knowledge. We need to drum this into our ears that infected people, 80 to 85 percent of them, the fact that they do not present with symptoms do not mean that they're not infected. An infected person can actually go home to meet an elderly man, his father or mother. We have Angela, Angela. from Delta. And of course, infect such a person. Angela, good morning. Yeah, please uh, go on with your question. Okay, obviously, that will be the last caller for today. So you, you, you discover that the idea that because we are not having, uh, so those set of people are not having any symptoms, they lose their guard. You can, you can be an asymptomatic carrier and go home and infect a number of people in your, in your, uh, in your house. We have a story of uh, uh, a man who lost his life recently in Lagos that was said to have been infected and went on without knowing that he was infected and ended up infecting the entire family. Everybody had to be admitted in the isolation center. The family members survived, but the man didn't survive. So that can happen when people who do not know their uh, status are not complying with government instituted directive of going with face mask, especially when one is in public. Okay. Also... Okay, Dr. Yeah. Bart, most definitely, like we do say, it's not a, a topic we can finish in one day. So most definitely we'll mark where we stop now and we'll pick up from there next week. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. See you next week.